America's number one national television program on Asia. Hello, I'm Yusai Khan. Welcome to Looking East. Universities are often accurate barometers for the political and social climate of a country. Recently, much attention has been focused by the media on student demonstrations in China and their political repercussions. Tonight, our program features a visit we paid to the prestigious Beijing University some months before the demonstrations. We spoke with the president of the university, an economics professor, a Chinese student, and an American student studying there. We observed the social and academic environment of Beijing University, which reflect many of the changes China itself has undergone in recent years. From the east comes the mysterious flavor of Qingdao beer. Qingdao, the beer as enticing as the Orient, as enchanting as the east. Now yours in the west. Qingdao, the beer of China. This is the main gate leading into Beijing University, which is to China what Harvard is to the United States, or Oxford to Great Britain. This scenic campus, located near the Summer Palace in the western part of Beijing, was once a huge flower garden for emperors of the Qing Dynasty. Although enrollment has increased sharply in recent years, the competition for admission to Beijing University remains intense. Five percent of China's high school graduates go on to college, and less than one percent of this group is admitted here. The university is famous for its law, literature, and political science departments. I spoke to the university president, mm -hmm. Ding Shishuan, a noted mm -hmm. mathematician and one-time visiting scholar at Harvard. President Ding, Beijing University is one of the oldest universities in China. When and why was it founded? Beijing University was established in 1898, so it hasn't been quite a hundred years. The Qing government wanted to learn something from the West, to build a Western educational system and to learn the Western sciences and technology. President Ding, you attended Harvard University in the U.S. How is the university system different in the U.S. than that of China? In terms of general format, there is very little difference. But in terms of the way the courses are arranged, Chinese universities place greater emphasis on specialization, that is, in areas in which the students are majoring. 
and the standard is relatively high. In the U.S., universities are more interested in training students to become all-rounders, but specialization has less importance than in China. I'll give you an example. I'm a mathematician, and in mathematics, more than half of the courses we have at the undergraduate level are offered in graduate programs in America. The fourth year courses in American universities are equivalent to the ones in our third year. As I said before, the history of China's contemporary educational system is less than a hundred years old. Before 1952, China's educational system mostly followed the American way. At that time, there were many more departments in Beijing University. We had medicine, agriculture, law, liberal arts, etc. But from 1952, we started to adapt the Russian system. Then Beijing University became more specialized in liberal arts and sciences. Recently, we've changed back again. We're starting to have more departments. I think we need a very strong natural science background for all our universities. Without that, it is very hard to develop any kind of engineering, science, and technology. Since the 60s, Beijing University has developed courses in engineering. So now we have a transistor radio department and computer science courses. We had a chance to observe one of these recent additions to the university curriculum when we attended a computer science class. As promised last time, you are going, you are going to get an assignment on the Windows system. Um, Dr. Lyle did it this morning, so apparently it's not very difficult. And he's going to talk about that for a few minutes. Oddly okay. enough, this session was conducted by American instructors who communicated mainly in English. Waiter on the program should do is present the user with a series of menus. Perhaps a menu for cow ya, chishwar, or chishwe if you're not going to make it. Shema? We have the right permission to do that. Okay, you have the right to look at anything in this directory. <laughs> There are 2,800 uh, teachers at the university, so there are some of whom 770 are full or associate uh, professors. Okay, that, that's the basic assignment. Yeah. <laughs> Unlike America, where participation in sports is mostly voluntary, Universities in China still have mandatory physical education. The degree to which this is pursued varies from school to school. This is a class in Wushu, traditional Chinese martial arts. Next, student life at Beijing University.
When you hear the sounds of style, the words Regent International Hotels can never be far behind. Today's most surprising fabric is over 4,000 years old. Silk from China. Soft, comfortable, clinging, sensuous silk. Tough, durable, long-lasting silk. Yet the biggest surprise is that this miracle fiber costs as little as it does. Silk, queen of fabrics. Only Malaysia offers you a tropical safari like no other. Meet cowboys of the east. Travel up jungle rivers. And spend a night in a longhouse. Come on a journey into sheer adventure. There are 12,000 students at Beijing University. 2,600 of these are graduate students. Over 80% of the students are from outside Beijing, so they have to live on campus. This leads to great congestion in classrooms, dormitories, and here in one of the seven dining halls on campus. We understand that one of the reasons why students recently demonstrated was because of the bad food served in universities. To get a better picture of student life at Beijing University, we spoke to Yang Yanhua, a graduate student, and Brian Aaron, a foreign student from America. Xiaoyang, how much does it cost you to go to Beijing University? Well, I don't know about the tuition because the state pay for it. Free? Yeah, uh, but I have to pay for my food and clothing. Um, Yet for undergraduate students, if you have a financial problem, the government will give you some money every month. And uh, for graduate students, um, I get for gra as a graduate student, I get um, forty six yuan every month. Brian, you're a foreign student. How much do you spend every year at Be Beijing University? I spend twelve hundred U.S. for the tuition and approximately fifty plus or minus for the room with a roommate. Uh, about two to three dollars a day on food and that's eating quite well. Now you study English <laughs> and you study Chinese. Correct. Well, is it considered very prestigious to go to Be Beijing University? Um, yes, of course. In China it's the most prestigious university and their, uh, their Chinese department is the best in China. How many foreign students are here? Probably 300 in all. How about American? Americans, 40. Brian, how does a foreign student apply to go to school in Beida? Uh, there is a list of colleges or universities in China that foreigners can attend. And to come to Beijing, uh, Beijing University, you have to have had at least three years background in Mandarin. Um, now, what I did was I graduated from Middlebury College and applied through the embassy, the Chinese embassy in Washington, and applied for the Chinese department, of course, and they accepted me. Xiaoyang, you are from the English department. Is studying English very important in China today? Yeah, I think, because now I become more and more important because I can teach English. Uh -huh. So that's why I think the study of English is becoming more and more prestigious. And Important. So when you graduate from graduate school, mm -hmm. you think you are going to teach? Yeah, teach here. Brian, how are you accepted as a foreigner in Beijing? Uh, I, f I find that uh, depending upon where I am and what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and occasionally what I'm wearing, that uh, I'm very accepted. Uh, I, I find that most people feel that when I made some kind of an effort to learn their language, that they're very receptive and open to either talking with me or, if nothing else, just being very polite. And, of course, that's quite welcome. Um, I'm a foreigner and just, I suppose, you could consider me a guest. But uh, I find that when I'm, uh, I've made an effort to really go out and, and interact or be culturally uh, open 
to the Chinese that they respond. Uh -huh. uh, my way of interacting with the regular students here is through sports, actually, because um, I do like to play uh, soccer and I like to play basketball, volleyball, although soccer does seem to be the most popular sport. We later followed Brian and Xiao Yang to their respective dormitories and compare the living conditions for local and foreign students. Hello. Um, this is my room. I have uh, six roommates. Uh, sorry, five roommates. Um, so the six of us share one room. The rooms here are uh, extremely comfortable, as far as I can see, compared to most other dorms in China. Uh, I believe it's the, it's the best built dorm in China. It also has uh, a, weight, a small weight room, three ping pong tables, and a rather large cafeteria downstairs. Uh, this is my bed, and this is my desk. Over here is, are my most valuable possessions, my books, actually. Um, here we have all of my toiletries. The top, a good layer of dust. Can't help that, it's, it's on everything. Here I keep my items which I don't like to get dusty, i.e. my bowls, chopsticks, and my tea, tea mug collection. Uh, some pictures of places where I'd rather be on occasion, uh, be it Switzerland, the Vatican, or Middlebury, Vermont. <laughs> Since we have um, six here, so every night uh, when all of us are in this room, we, nobody can, can actually work. If somebody really wants to study and if we have a paper, something like a paper to work on, we have to go to the library. It's, it's very comfortable actually. It's much more comfortable than a lot of other rooms in China. I suppose it's comparable to a freshman dorm in the United States. Except for the television and the refrigerator at your foot, which you may not be able to see. Uh, but that happened to be my Japanese roommates. The best thing here is that um, I have so many roommates, so life is really exciting sometimes. And they have friends and I have friends. Sometimes when our friends all come in, that's, that's a party, right? <laughs> there, there are no curfew hours here. The doors are open 24 hours a day. And of course we're required to go to class and we're on our honor. Uh, in the evening at exactly uh, 12 o'clock, all the lights in this building is turned out, uh, turned off. Sorry. Um, so after that, everyone must go to sleep. Well, what do you do for fun? Every weekend, I go home to visit my parents. And they live in yeah, in Beijing. Beijing. Yeah, about an hour's um, by an, about it takes about an hour by bus. And um, if I have time, I you also also go dancing. Where do you go dancing? Um, sometimes they just organize a dancing party in the students' canteen in the evening. Brian, obviously you can't go home on weekends. What do you do on weekends? On the weekend, um, I will usually go to see friends outside of campus that I don't have time to see during the weekdays because of classes. Or maybe um, go out to some great restaurants, maybe get a little group together and go out and maybe hit a restaurant across town. Uh, which might be a bit far on, during the weekday. But during the weekend, we all make a trip in town, spend the day in town, and then come out. On some occasions, we have parties in the foreign students' dorm uh, every Saturday night. It seems that this past month was the month for parties. We had three parties out of four weekends, and wow. they're, they are pretty uh, rip-roaring, actually. How about dating? Well, dating's free. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So are there a lot of romances going on on campus? Uh, certainly. Certainly. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, also, do you go out with foreign students? Yeah. Xiaoyang, what do you think of American or foreign men? I think they are more open. I think Chinese boys are more uh, reserved. Because when you talk with a Chinese boy, um, they usually 
well, the first time they see, they talk with you, they usually evade your question. Uh -huh. But I think most American boys I, I meet, they, they're not like Chinese in this respect. Next, politics on campus. There is an island on this earth so colorful, it is surely the work of a master painter. An island where even on a gray day, a yellow hue shines through, where a stroke of green becomes a jade figurine, and birds sing their tune, where exotic orchids bloom, and men walk near to the moon. An island where fish of blue delight the eye, then continue their journey across the sky. Where with every drop of gold, a romantic evening will unfold. An island where the red streak renders the image complete. Singapore, the most surprising tropical island on Earth. China Today. Experience the excitement and wonder with CAAC, the national airline of the People's Republic of China. CAAC flies to China more frequently than any other airline with non-stop service from San Francisco. Flights also originate from New York and Los Angeles. Experience China today with CAAC. Today's most surprising fabric is over 4,000 years old. Silk from China. Soft, comfortable, clinging, sensuous silk. Tough, durable, long-lasting silk. Yet the biggest surprise is that this miracle fiber costs as little as it does. Silk, queen of fabrics. We visited Beijing at a time of relative calm, but many still remember when intellectuals were thought to be the cause of China's problems. During the Cultural Revolution, teachers were publicly insulted and even physically abused. This is Zhang Youren, a very well-respected 62-year-old professor of economics. Professor, during the Cultural Revolution, professors were really badly treated. How are things now? At that time, everybody was an ordinary worker. Mm -hmm. What did you do? We all went to the Jiangxi Fanyang Lake Farm to grow rice. It was said that for every jin of the rice that we produced, it would cost about a couple of dollars because you'd have to include our salary into the production cost. Many of us spent two years there growing rice. I was there for two years. Uh -huh. And then you came back to Peking? And then afterwards, I came back to Beijing University, teaching and writing. Isn't the government policy to increase the prestige of the professor today? It's a social trend. It's been an old Chinese tradition to have respect for teachers, although it was somewhat ignored during the Cultural Revolution. The idea has always been deeply ingrained in people's hearts. So on the surface during that time, the teachers were attacked. But deep down, I think the masses still respected teachers. Now, Chinese intellectuals would rather have the title of professor than the title of minister. As teachers regained public esteem, it also seemed that there was increased freedom for students to voice their opinions. You know, university students in America are extremely vocal. They love to express their views. How do you characterize your Chinese students? Young people in China are like all other young people in the world. Since the Gang of Four fell from power, the youth in China have shared more responsibility and they feel more confident about China's future.
They hope to contribute their best to the country. The students voice their opinions and they hold many discussion meetings on these matters. Do you encourage that? Yes, I encourage them to do so. Can the students very freely express their views in the university? Yeah, I think they can. They can express their views and they can um, give suggestions to the university authority. The first months of 1987 have brought a definite shift towards the conservative in China. So things at Beijing University may be different from when we were there last. Still, in the past 10 years, China has swung from the political left to the political right several times. So what has happened may constitute just one more step along the bumpy road towards modernization. Well, that's our show for tonight. I'm Yusai Khan for Looking East. Air transportation to Singapore provided by Air Canada, to China by CAAC, to Malaysia by the Malaysian Airlines System, and to Thailand by Thai Airways International. Hotel accommodations provided by the Regent of Bangkok and the Singapore Hyatt. We would love to hear from you. Please send us your letters and comments to Looking East, P.O. Box 723, FDR Station, New York, New York, 10150.